Today we're going to take you around a city that completely won us over, Taipei. As two self-proclaimed foodies who are always on the hunt for the next meal, we love the amazing mix of restaurants and street markets the city had to offer. On top of that, there were plenty of temples, museums, and nature escapes to keep us busy throughout the day, so we actually managed to pack quite a bit into our trip. With this video, we're going to show you 30 things to do in Taipei, Taiwan, and you can count on a few foodie recommendations to be sprinkled throughout. Now let's get started. Let's start with the city's most iconic landmark, Taipei 101. Well, good morning. Today the skies have finally parted, it has stopped raining. So we're going to visit the attraction we've been waiting for. We're heading to Taipei 101. This was the tallest building in the world at one point. It no longer is. So yeah, it should be fun and we should be able to get some great views of the city. Have the tickets you paid you yeah do the math. so it's uh, 600 Taiwan dollars each so you're basically looking at just under 20 US bucks about $19 so not cheap but I think it's gonna be worth it So we made it to the top. Yeah, that was crazy. So it took 37 seconds. When we both got off, we thought, man, it felt like it was only like five or 10 seconds. I know. And to get up that high, it didn't feel like as powerful as you would think. Like it was still really smooth. Yeah, it was very smooth, but my ears did pop. Once you finish visiting Taipei 101, you'll exit inside the Taipei 101 Mall, which is also worth the visit. This is a mall with high-end brands and designer labels, and it's probably the most luxurious mall we've ever set foot in. So if you're looking for panoramic views of Taipei that also include Taipei 101, you'll want to climb Elephant Hill. I'm currently struggling here. They call it a hike, but really it's just hundreds of stairs, and you're just climbing stairs the whole time. But we're starting to get nice views. Just catching our breath now. So I think the hardest part was probably the humidity, not even the steps. Yeah. Sam, what did you think? I'm sweating profusely. I I'm think I see some little drips there on your forehead. Little, I, like, I'm totally drenched in my shirt. I'm so glad we brought water because we weren't initially planning to do this one today. Yeah. So good idea to put some water in my backpack. Next, we visited Liberty Square, which is flanked by the National Theatre to the north, the National Concert Hall to the south, and the Freedom Square Memorial Arch to the west. These structures are impressive enough on their own, but the main reason you come here is to see the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall, which was erected in memory of the former President of the Republic of China. You can also watch a changing of the guard ceremony at the memorial, but try to get there early, otherwise you'll be several rows of people deep. Another place to visit in Taipei is the National Revolutionary Martyr Shrine, which was built to honor the soldiers who died during the War of Resistance against Japan the civil war between nationalist and communist China, and the first and second Taiwan Strait crises. You can also watch the changing of the guard here. So we have just arrived at the Shilin Night Market and it's still quite early, it's 4.30 p.m. Most of the stalls start opening closer to 5 o'clock and things will only continue to get busier as the night goes on. And apparently this market can run to like 1 or 2 in the morning. So yeah, still very early. We were hungry so we couldn't wait any longer. If you're a foodie, you'll definitely enjoy Shillin Night Market. There are food options galore and there's enough variety that you can turn all the snacking into a full meal. If your taste buds are feeling adventurous, be sure to track down Stinky Tofu. So Sam is leading the way with this one. What are we having next? All right, moment of truth. We've been playing it kind of tame, playing it kind of safe so far. We're going right into the classic uh, Taiwanese street food here. We are having stinky tofu. I'm gonna go take a bite here. Yeah. I think there's some cabbage. You can see it's on a double skewer yeah, here. Yeah, double skewers and it's got cabbage in the middle, somewhat like a sandwich. 
Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> A little overpowering there. That is something else. <laughs> it's spicy. Um, oh man. I'm keeping my distance. Oh, it's just, you really taste the sourness of it and yeah. the, the fermented aspect and oh, that's something that that would take a while to get used to. I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to enjoy this one to be honest. One of my favorite outings in Taipei was riding the Maokong gondola up to the hills. The route is 4.3 kilometers long and we rode in cabins with glass floors which was kind of scary but cool at the same time. And of course, because this is Taipei, it started raining again as soon as we got off the gondola. So I think we're gonna pop in for some tea. There are lots of little tea houses around here. So yeah, we're gonna stay dry and hope the rain stops. Sam is stealing my order. He saw that I was ordering something really tasty and he was like, that's what I'm getting. Yeah, well, copycat. You're, you're taking the good one. Copycat. So I'm, I'm copycatting, why not? So we found a tea house with a view. We've got Taipei 101 off in the distance. And we also have nice lush greenery all around us. And I feel really far removed away from the city, which is quite a nice feeling. It doesn't actually take that long to, to get away from the city center and to be out in nature, which is something I really like. We may have gone a little overboard. We ordered two different kinds of teas, one coffee and lots of Taiwanese desserts. This one's actually Sam's. I believe it's Teguain, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, Teguain or Teguan tea. Uh, we asked what was the local tea and they suggested this, this is one. This the one. So we have to let it steep for two minutes and yeah. then we can pour it. And then look at the snack plate we have. Snack. We've got cookies, we've got dried fruit, we've got something that... This looks like green. mango. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, oh it looks my. so good. It looks like... Is that one with like... Uh, has peanuts or something or...? Maybe. Wow. I'm gonna wait for my tea and then we'll dig into this. Already getting into the snacks. Yeah, I already had one of these. <laughs> this is awesome. This is like one of those um, sweet and sour dried plums. Oh, I love these. Mm. You're just popping them like candy. Mm -hmm. They're really good. Um, they have a large pit in the middle, but really sweet and sour. Um, so flavorful. <laughs> you look like you're having a moment over mm, there. I am. <laughs> Dessert time! What are you trying to into this cookie. I really hope it's peanut butter. Please be peanut butter. Mm. What is it? Not peanut butter. Not peanut butter? Is it sweet? Yeah, but I can't identify what it is. It's not peanut butter. <laughs> well, why would it be? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a thing in Taiwan, is it? For me to try this one. I think it's puffed rice. It's light in the hand, sticky. Mm. Well, nice yeah. and crunchy. Sweet on the outside. Mm. I like it. And now there's one more left to try, that little green one. Please be wasabi, please be wasabi. <laughs> it's probably going to be matcha. No. It's like a crumbly, I don't know if you call it a cookie, it's more like a, a cake. Is it green tea flavored? No, it's not. Is it wasabi? No, it's not. <laughs> it's sweet. It's really good though. On the way back from the gondola, you'll exit next to the Taipei Zoo, which is a family-friendly attraction in the city. We are now visiting the Beito Hot Springs, and it smells like rotten eggs. It doesn't smell very pretty, but it does look pretty cool. So we can't go swimming in that very spot because it's over 75 degrees Celsius and that would kind of cook you up. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that would not be fun. So we're visiting Guandu Nature Park and it's nice to get out of nature here obviously but we're hoping to also spot some birds as well today. 
so Sam is being way too loud in this park and all the birds keep flying away before he can spot them. So Sam, are you spotting any birds or are you scaring them away? Probably a bit of both. Like, I spotted a few but I didn't have my camera ready so it was a bit of a photography fail. But uh, we just started so I'm still confident we can find some. I think you're being too loud. That's why the birds keep flying away. So Sam spent so much time in nature that he just confused a bird call for the sound of a construction truck. <laughs> what? How is that possible? Hey, the construction truck sounds a little different over here, I guess. <laughs> I don't have any excuses. Tam Shui is a seaside district that's 40 minutes north of Taipei, so we thought we'd include it in the list. The bike path along the waterfront makes it perfect for a day trip on a sunny day. So this is pretty cool. We just rented bikes outside of the station and I did my math wrong so I thought it was $10 for an hour, which I thought was great. But it turns out it's only a little over a dollar and you get the bicycle for a whole hour and you can just ride along the waterfront. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. And it's a beautiful day to be out after all that rain. So the biking was a lot of fun. I mean, we covered quite a bit of territory in just one hour. Really cool just going out and seeing people fishing, see people out shopping, doing different things. Mm -hmm. just, it's nice and quiet out here. Yeah. And there are like museums and cultural attractions. We didn't really visit many of them because we would have had to get off of our bikes and we didn't have a lock for that. So yeah, we just kind of focused on the bike ride, which was fun and stuff. If you don't want to go all the way to Tam Shui, you can also explore Taipei by bike with the U-Bike share system that has kiosks across the city. Today we're on a bit of a food mission. We've been hearing about Din Tai Fung. Apparently they specialize in soup dumplings. That's yeah. what we're going to try today. We absolutely love dumplings. So any excuse for us to eat dumplings is always a good one. And yeah, it's another rainy day in Taipei. So we figured <laughs> let's plan our day around food. Let's go eat. Yes, and this place opens at 10 in the morning and we are expecting huge lines. So we're here early. Let's go get in line. Alright, so before coming here, we were reading the history of the place and apparently the man who started this, Yang, he used to run a shop where he sold cooking oil and like that was his business. But apparently when that industry started to change and people weren't buying as much cooking oil anymore, he had to come up with a new business idea. So he and his wife decided, okay, we're going to sell soup dumplings. And like they became such a huge hit that today they have locations not only like across Taipei and Taiwan, but also around the world in places like LA and Hong Kong. So yeah, pretty cool story. And now we're waiting for the food. There's a look of excitement. So the star of the meal has arrived. The Xiaolong Bao is here on the table in real life. And this is cool. So you eat it with a special sauce and they actually give you instructions on how it's done. How to enjoy Xiaolong Bao. This is how you eat it. Um, and they basically explain how to prepare the sauce. So we're going to try our hand at this. The waiter actually wanted to make it for us and we're like, no, we are filming this. <laughs> so allow me to demonstrate. Okay, so first up we have our little plate with ginger right here. So it says put some soy sauce and vinegar. So it's one part soy sauce, one part soy sauce, and three parts vinegar. I'd say that's about three parts vinegar. Next up, we grab our little xiaolong bao and dip it into the sauce. Once it's been dipped, we place it on the spoon. Let's see what's next. Oh, let's not forget, you have to poke a little hole to let out 
the soupy broth that's hiding in there. Can you see that? Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Look at, Look it at that out. pouring out. And then, then you take some of the ginger from the plate, add it on top, and it all goes in in one bite. Is that too big for one bite? Let <laughs> me <laughs> try. Mm. Is that tasty? Wow. That is amazing. That is so juicy. Oh man. Is that one of the best dumplings you've ever had? It really is. I'm so glad we came here and stood in line. This is worth it. So next up, we are visiting the National Palace Museum. It is still drizzling, if you can believe that. But at least the sun has also come out. So a little bit warmer, we've got some rainbows, and yeah, we're just gonna visit this place. Okay, so we had a slight change of plans. It was really crowded to go into the museum and they actually had lines to visit some of the galleries. So we decided to scrap that, we're not going in. And we're visiting the Qishan Gardens instead, which are right next door. It's really cheap to get in. And yeah, it's so peaceful. Hardly anyone in sight. Another thing to do in Taipei is to visit the Longshan Temple. This is a Buddhist temple that was built by Chinese settlers from Fujian in honor of Guan Yin, also known as the Goddess of Mercy. Now it's been a while since we talked about food in this video, so let's hop over to the Raoi Street Night Market. This market was even more geared towards foodies than the Xilin Night Market, which we had previously visited. We had baked pork buns, egg tarts, cartoon-shaped waffles, chicken steak, as well as a few mysterious snacks. However, the most memorable was the liquid nitrogen ice cream. Please put the whole cookie deep in your mouth and chew with So what are you having, Audrey? It's smoking. Smoking cookie. I have to put this whole thing in my mouth, chew with my teeth, yeah. not with my tongue. All right. Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> smoking out of your mouth. <laughs> you look like a dragon. <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> oh, it's like ice. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can you kind of get stuck to your tongue. That's why they tell you like, eat it with your teeth and eat it fast. And while we're on the topic of food, let us show you what a typical Taiwanese breakfast looks like. So this is a wheat cake, sesame seeds on the exterior, and it has an omelet inside. And for those of you with a sweet tooth, allow us to introduce you to mango shaved ice. All right, so our dessert has arrived and it is standing room only at this particular yeah, spot. So they've got like this little bar outside where you just bring your dessert, you eat it here. But yeah, because all the, all the tables are full. <laughs> I know, it's packed with people and there's a huge line of people ordering. So this is it, this is the mango snowflake ice. It's a mountain, like this is huge. And we went for the classic, so it's just mango and panna cotta on top. But I mean, they probably have like 10 different flavors with like strawberries and chocolate and red yeah. bean, like you could choose anything. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to get a bit of everything. Oh wow, the ice is melting a bit already. Okay. I know, you have to be fast with this because it just yeah. starts melting on okay. the spot. And I'm gonna get some piece of mango. So I've got a little bit of everything now. Mm. What do you think? Oh yeah, that's really sweet. You taste the, you really taste the shaved ice, you really taste the syrup, and the nice big chunks of mango. Fresh mangoes. It reminds me of something we had in Korea not too long ago called mm -hmm. Sulbing, yeah. which is their shaved ice dessert, and yeah, it's really good. Um, I think I would enjoy this even more on a hot day as opposed to a cool one like this, but still a lot of fun and still really enjoying it. Yeah. We also made sure to try a dish that's a local favorite, beef noodle soup. We're going to be trying beef noodle soup and this is a super popular dish. We plotted a whole bunch of places on our phone and finally settled on one. So let's go find Jianhong beef noodles. Let's go. 
All right, so the food is already here. It came out super quickly. We ordered two bowls, and this is a small portion, but you know what? I think this is going to be pretty filling for pretty one big person. For a small portion. Yeah. I was kind of worried we wouldn't be able to get a table because it's already 11:30 in the morning, so kind of close to lunch, but there's still plenty of space, so that's good. Um, but yeah, anyways, let's have a look, a closer look at the meal. So here you have it. So it's a noodle soup with a beef broth and these chunks of meat those on top. These are really generous chunks of, of meat. I know, there. yeah. It's thick. It's a lot thicker than I would have imagined. Yeah. And the beef, it can be tendon, brisket, or shank. And again, I was worried this was going to be all tendon and I'm not a huge fan of tendon. So I'm glad to see like some really nice cuts of meat in here with not a whole lot of fat. So yeah, I'm going to grab some chopsticks right here. Lots of what appears to be uh, chive green onions. Yeah. Yeah, well. chives on top. So. so let's do this. Let's try it. Noodles first. Put a ring on the spoon. On a spoon, perhaps. Mm. That's good. They look thick. They're quite thick. Yeah, they're nice. A little chewy. They've been soaking in the beef broth, so that's nice. Let's go for some noodles and meat now. Oh my. This is messy. I do not have a talent for noodles and chopsticks, my goodness. <laughs> Why don't you try the meat? Both of them. Noodles and meat. Okay, so we're getting the noodles on there. Got the noodles, fine. <gasps> okay, you know what? Let's just go for the meat, guys. <laughs> the chopsticks aren't helping me today. Mm. Oh, wow. It's like really salty and savory. Mm. You like that? It's quite tender as well. Yeah, this has been cooking for a while. This is good. Pleasantly surprised over here. If I had to describe Hua Shan 1914 Creative Park in two words, it would be hipster central. This place was once a winery, but today it's a multi-purpose space that draws artists looking to showcase plays, films, art, photography, and so much more. We also noticed it's really popular with Instagrammers. Seriously, there were photo shoots happening every few steps. So if you happen to be in Taipei on a rainy day, you can check out the National Taiwan Museum. However, if you're here on a rainy day and a Monday like we are, you're out of luck. We're only going to be able to show you the exterior and that's about it. Another place to visit is the 228 Peace Memorial located in the same park as the National Taiwan Museum. It commemorates the victims of what is known as the February 28th incident, which began on the same date and saw thousands of civilians killed for taking part in an anti-government uprising. So next up we're at Xingtian Temple, which you can see right behind me. And this temple has more of a local feel. You don't see as many tourists here. And the temple is dedicated to the patron saint of businessmen. So I'm guessing lots of businessmen are probably going to be in here praying and getting blessings. So let's go check it out. We also made time to visit the Taipei Expo Park, which is a multi-purpose park just north of the city center that hosts different events and exhibitions. From there, it's just a skip and a hop to the Taipei Fine Arts Museum, which focuses on modern and contemporary art. And while you're at it, you can also visit Taipei Story Museum, which is a house that was built in the English Tudor style by a tea merchant and now holds exhibits related to tea and local history. The street food adventures continue and we are going to be eating at the Ningxia Night Market. So this is our third night market here in Taipei and I feel like there's still a lot of Taiwanese street food we haven't tried so we're going to be on a mission to try a whole bunch of new stuff tonight. You may be tired of hearing about night markets and street food at this point but indulge us once more for our third and final market visit in Taipei. In Ningxia Night Market we sample the shrimp stick stuffed with cheese, Chinese scallion pancakes, Flaming beef, yes, they cooked it with a blowtorch, 
papaya milk smoothies, cheese potato, and coffin bread. Now wrapping up this video, here's a quick note on transportation. Travel tip for Taipei. Yeah, so pretty much the easiest way to get around Taipei is by the MRT. And if you're gonna come here, you wanna pick up an easy card. Mm -hmm. We paid 100 Taiwanese dollars, which is about three US dollars right now. And then you can load it, reload it, it helps you save on fares. And the best part is you don't have to keep getting single purchase fares every time you go to the station. And that's it for our visit to Taipei. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you got a few ideas of things to do, see, and most importantly, eat on your next visit. As always, if you have any other suggestions of fun things to do around Taipei, we invite you to share them with travelers in the comments below. Wishing you happy travels and until next time. Alright guys, so if you've been watching our channel for the last few weeks, you've probably noticed that we filmed a lot in Taipei. So we thought for today's video we would share some tips and yep. some costs because a lot of people ask how expensive is Taipei or how much money did you spend and do you have yeah. any tips? So today is going to be more of a practical video with a lot of information. Yeah, exactly. And the cool thing is you guys suggested we do this and we're really excited to do we it. We listened. We listened. Also, we have a lot of information to share so we had to make notes on the computer. You're yeah. probably going to catch us staring down. But it's just because otherwise, it's a lot of yeah. prices to remember. Yeah, we don't anyway. want to miss out on stuff. <laughs> so let's get started. First up, we're going to talk about transportation from the airport into Taipei. So we have a few different options. Yeah, so we're look, looking down at the screen. So the first option is taking the express airport bus. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. Yeah. We ended up doing that and it's probably it's the cheapest and maybe one of the most convenient ways to get around. Yeah. So I'm looking here and the price range is between 120 and 150 new Taiwan dollars, mm -hmm. which means it runs for about four to five US bucks. And that yeah. Gets, yeah. So basically when you exit in the arrival gate, just go to the information desk and ask them about the bus. So they'll point you in the right direction. And then once you get to the right stand, you just need to let them know where in the city you're going and right. they'll tell you what stop you need to get off at and they will charge you accordingly. Yeah, it's awesome. So the, Super easy. you don't even need to know which bus number you're going on. They they have that figured they out. For you. You. They have that figured out. Next option. All right. So moving on, there is the high speed uh, rail station located at the airport. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing I'm looking here is that we didn't do this, so I have to look at my notes here. So it takes 25 minutes to get from the airport to the main train station, mm -hmm. which is pretty amazing. That's that's a really fast ride. Yeah. And the train station in Taipei is a really central location, so that might be your best bet. Then um, you would have to transfer either to the subway or yeah. the bus because, I mean, yeah. your hotel may not be next to the main train right. station. Right, so it might involve multiple types of transportation. Yeah. I'm seeing that the price here is 165 new Taiwan dollars, mm -hmm. which is under six. Six US bucks. So again, not bad. Pretty cheap would be a really efficient way to get into the city and probably quite fun too. I always like taking we like taking trains. So. <laughs> <Should we say? laughs> yes. <laughs> Next up. Alright, and okay, so we're moving up in price. This is the airport shuttle. Um, I guess this is probably a little bit more comfortable. It says door-to-door uh, -door service to all hotels in Taipei fancy. City. So yeah, that's pretty fancy, but you are gonna be paying more. I'm noticing the price is 350 new Taiwan dollars, which puts you at over uh, 11 US dollars per person. So yeah, that's a big bump up in price. Mm -hmm. And the real big bump up in price is the next option. The taxi. <laughs> the taxi. And that's going to cost you from anywhere from 900 to 1,200 new Taiwan dollars. So you are looking at the 30 to 40 US dollar price range. And that's if you're staying in the city center. Yeah. Honestly, I would probably go for the first option because yeah. the bus was very comfortable, easy to find. They dropped yeah. us off where we needed to go. So yeah, it's, it's affordable too. Super affordable. And yeah, I've done that. I've been to Taipei twice. You've been once mm -hmm. and I've done, I've done that service twice. Great service. Okay. So that's transportation. Next, let's move on to accommodation what type of accommodations are you going to stay in right. Taipei? So let's start with the cheapest and... Hostel. That's always a hostel. Always hostel. Almost anywhere in the world is a hostel. And looking at my notes here, um, you can get, stay at a hostel for anywhere between 400 to 600 new Taiwan dollars. And so that's a 
between what 12 to 20 US bucks. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense because when I went in 2010, I stayed at one of the cheapest hostels and it was 10 US dollars. So like six, seven years later, the cheapest one is about 12 bucks. Yeah, that sounds about bad. right. You'll yeah. probably get a bed in a dorm, so you yeah. may be sharing the space with a few different travelers. Yeah. But if you're traveling solo, that can be a really fun way to meet people, so it's an yeah. option. Next option is uh, between two to three star hotel. Mm -hmm. And at that price, you're looking between 40 to 100 US dollars. What we went for this time was actually an Airbnb rental, and we often use Airbnb when we travel. So we got, what would you call it, like a studio? Yeah, it was kind of like a studio apartment. It had more features than a typical hotel. Mm -hmm. Like we had our own washer, we had a tiny kitchen. Yeah. We had, uh, actually everything else the same as a hotel except for those yeah. two things. We had a little kitchen and a little washer and a place to hang off our clothes, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Man, we could do our own laundry mm -hmm. because we were, we were staying there for over a week. So yeah, yeah we did laundry every other day. Uh, that meant we had nice clean clothes. We had we, a kitchen where we could prepare yeah. breakfast, so that was pretty nice as yeah. well. Yeah, and we did that quite a, We bought some local fruit, we did stuff like that. So uh, this type of place, when you have your own kitchen, it allows you to save a little bit of money. Yeah. That's one less meal that you have to spend at a restaurant. And you know what? The Airbnb rental was actually slightly cheaper than staying in a hotel room, and we had more space. So yes. that was pretty cool. So price-wise? Yeah, price-wise. So yeah, price-wise, it was like, you. Uh, we paid, I think it was about 50 bucks a night, and mm -hmm. 40 to 60 dollars gets you that type of place in Taipei. Oh, and our Airbnb was like right outside the metro station. Yes. Literally, like you had the exit and then our building yeah. was right next door. So it was amazing for transportation. So the cool thing about uh, Taipei is it has one of the most amazing metro systems we've ever used. Mm -hmm. And our biggest tip is not so much where you're going to stay, not what, like there's not a particular neighborhood we'd recommend, but do get a place that is within walking distance of a metro because that is going to allow you to get anywhere in the city super efficiently. All right, so so that, that ties in nicely to what we're doing because we're going to talk about transportation. All right. And the only thing that we recommend doing for transportation in Taipei is to take the Taipei Metro, also known as the MRT. Yeah, and you got an easy card for that. Right. You stay there. Easy card is awesome. I'm looking over here just to confirm the price. Yeah, the easy card is 100 new Taiwan dollars, which is just over three US bucks. Amazing card to have. Not only can you use it to get around on the metro, but you can also use it for museums. Yeah, for a few attractions around the city. The yeah. zoo? The zoo, the, the, uh, the, the Malcolm Gondola, so, so taking the, the cable car. And also, you can also use it to rent the, the public bikes too. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, it is one Multifunctional, of the- Multifunctional, multi-purpose. It's one of the most versatile transportation cards you can ever pick up. Like, it's just awesome. Oh, and the other cool thing, and this is really important, is you save 20% on your fares. So fares start at 20 um, New Taiwan dollars, which is like, what, 60, 70 US cents. And you get your 20% discount, and that brings it down to, you're starting off at like 50 cents, which is 16. And Sam loves discounts, so yeah. that's what he got the card. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna, save, it's gonna save you money though, especially if you're there for a few days. Mm -hmm. And there is an option here, I'm just looking down here, you can get a one day pass, and we didn't do this obviously because we stayed for a while, but if you pay uh, 200 uh, Taiwanese dollars, which is under 7 US bucks, that gives you unlimited rides on the, the MRT, but it does not, I'm looking here at the notes, it does not include the, Mal, the Malcolm Gondola. Wah, wah. So yeah. But anyways, like, I, I can't stress enough how cool this, this the, the MRT is. It's like so clean, so efficient, on time, Get you anywhere in the city within minutes. It has a fun little jingle. <laughs> yeah, we loved it. We we took it to go everywhere. If we couldn't walk there, we we were taking the the MRT. So you've probably already watched our city guide of things to do in Taipei, but we wanted to highlight a few activities that are free if you're not looking to spend any money whatsoever. Right. So number one, if you don't want to go up Taipei 101, but you want cool views of the city. You can actually climb Elephant Hill, and we show that in our video. Yes. It involves a whole lot of <laughs> stairs, and yeah. you're probably going to be sweating, but you can yeah. get pretty high up, and then you just get these amazing landscapes. I, I would do that in the morning or late afternoon, yes. because you will be hot and sweaty if you do it midday. <laughs> time, time. The humidity in, in Taipei is, uh, is off the charts. 
Okay, uh, the second thing, and this is something we did a lot of, is you've got to check out the night markets mm -hmm. and eat the street food in Taipei. Yes. It is legendary. There are so many to choose from. We went to some of the more famous Shilin? ones. Yeah, Shilin. Ningxia and, and Rawai. Yeah, those are, yeah. The, those are the three we went to. There's more. There's, there's more within the city center. There's also yeah. more that you can visit like on a day trip. Yeah, so those markets, I mean, markets are free to visit, so it's just a matter of how much you end up spending on food there. So again, yeah. if you're on a budget, it's a really great place to go for your meals. We are going to number three, uh, that is the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall. Mm -hmm. One of the most like iconic, famous places to visit in the city. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's definitely worth a visit. Yeah, it's free. You can go there to watch the changing of the guard. Yeah. It does get quite crowded and I would also recommend going either early in the morning or late in the afternoon because when the sun is shining down on like that, that white marble or whatever, it's like, it kind of burns. It's so hot, like you really feel the heat like shining back in your face. Get it's big. really intense. Get big. So yeah, early in the day is best. Another free attraction you can visit are the Bay 2 Hot Springs. And you do have to pay if you want to go into some of the private springs. It's it's just a small fee to go in yeah. and soak yourself. But if you just want to enjoy the springs and like look at them, take right. pictures, that's also free. Yeah, and an important thing to note about that is that's kind of on the outskirts of the city. Yeah, that's not in the city center. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that takes a little. It's a little bit longer to get to, but it's one of the. It's definitely quieter than downtown. Mm -hmm. And the last one is probably one of the most famous temples in all of Taipei is the Longshan Temple. So yeah, check that place out. So those are the five things that we recommend. For free! For free! And so the next section that we have are the musty things in the city. Things that you're going to have to pay for. Yeah, you will pay for these, but do not miss them. And number one is... Taipei 101! Of course. <laughs> one of the coolest buildings we've ever seen anywhere like not just the, like the outside design of it is awesome, but it's also just an amazing building to go into. There's it's just it's really nice, really new, modern. So in terms of the price of visiting, it is only six hundred new Taiwan dollars, which is under twenty U.S. bucks at the current moment. So so a little bit pricey, but I mean it's the most iconic site in all of Taipei, so I think it's worth paying for it. Next is the gondola ride. And this was, that was fun. I think that was probably our favorite activity, right? On a personal level. Yeah. It's just gorgeous to go on this this gondola ride. You are out in nature and you just get like when you arrive, it's so cool. You get a, a really cool view of like the city like way off in the distance. And it's also a great place to have uh, Taiwanese tea. Yeah, so you're up in the hills and they have a lot of different tea houses you can visit. So if you want something close to nature to just have a very chill and relaxed day, you right. can go have tea, enjoy the views, walk around. So it's pretty cool. And that costs, yeah, it's, it's 120 New Taiwan dollars, which is the equivalent of four US dollars to get there. Yeah. And, each way. And as we mentioned before, you can use your easy card. Yes. So if you have enough credit, that's an awesome way to do it. We're moving on to must-eat foods. <laughs> what do you have to eat in Taiwan? Let's see. Oh my gosh. So we're going we're going back to the night markets and my gosh, there is just an endless supply of things to try. I mean you have everything from the, the things exotic as uh, stinky tofu oh. <laughs> to to like tame stuff like there's a lot of really good desserts, ice cream, there's different types of chicken, there's different types of there's like everything. If you guys really want to see all the different options of foods to eat, you have to check out our three different street food markets that we did. Anyways, price point for these street food snacks? Yeah, so you can pay anywhere between 20 uh, to 150 new Taiwan dollars. And that's that ranges from under one US dollar all the way up to five US bucks. And the only time we paid that much was for like expen more expensive meat and fish items. Mm -hmm. Most things slotted in between the 30 and 90 price, which is between one to three US bucks. Mm -hmm. So man, you could, if you, if you have a budget of like 10, 10 US dollars per person. You can eat well. You can eat very well. You will be stuffed by the time you leave. Okay, so that's, that's a must. Uh, the next one is... Din Tai Fang. If you're going all the way to Taipei, you need to try Xiaolong Bao. These special pork soup dumplings, they are amazing. Yeah. And they are really affordable for, for a restaurant with so yeah. much hype. It's a Michelin star restaurant. Michelin star. And this, this I, I think it's safe to say this was our favorite restaurant in Taipei. But we went back again and again and again. I don't, well, 
three, four times, Many five times. times, something like that. And we found that like if you're if you're spending between three to twelve US dollars per person, you're gonna be eating really well. Mm -hmm. So again, really quite affordable. And the only thing is you may have to line up. Yes. Yeah. The lines are really long, so go early or go outside of meal times. Like go in the middle of the afternoon and then maybe you can get in really quick. Right. So this is the fun part. We are gonna talk about the things we liked about Taipei. And so, then disliked. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna yeah, every 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 like guide we do, we are gonna talk about the things we liked and disliked. Mm -hmm. Loved and hated. Let's start with the positives. Alright, so number one. And it's the third time we're talking about this, but the night markets and street food <laughs> in Taipei are legendary. Like Taipei, I would say I would call it the foodie capital of Asia. Yeah. Like I don't think the only other city I've been to where they're that passionate about food is Lima in mm. Peru. And that is not in Asia. <laughs> no. So I mean, you have night markets that are running every single day. Um, you have an endless supply of food to try. It's all really affordable. And we also saw that people are willing to line up for yeah. food. Like it's crazy. People yeah. will stand in line to eat at this one particular restaurant because they specialize in something and it's amazing. Even for street food too. Yeah. So I mean, that's a really good way to find out where you should be eating when if you go to these night markets. If there's a line, that means it's good. Another thing we really enjoyed about Taipei was proximity to nature. So it didn't take very long to ride the MRT out of the city and just find yourself like in a, in a nature reserve where you can see wildlife and birds or like to be out in the hot springs. Yeah, or the Ma the Maokong gondola. Or the gondola. Yeah. Or even the day we went out to Tamshui and we went biking along the yeah. waterfront. That was so much fun. So yeah, you're never too far from from the city center. And you're never too far from nature. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> you're never too far. You can escape the city. You can escape the city center really easily. Yes. Okay. Next one is, uh, yeah, I want to talk about the awesome metro system, the MRT. Mm -hmm. One of the best we've ever used anywhere in the world. Just fantastic, efficient, cheap, clean, clean. Takes you all over the city. There's lots of lines, so you can transfer easily. Just an awesome way to get around Taipei. Ooh, another really important one. We met lots of friendly locals. Like seriously, anytime we looked a little lost or disoriented, yeah. people actually approached us and asked us like, oh, where do you need to go? Do you yeah. need any help? And that is very rare. I find that in big cities, people are always in a rush or like they're just focused on themselves and they yeah. don't really stop to help tourists. But in Taipei, we had a lot of people helping us out. And we also had random people approach us just to practice English and have a little chat. Yeah. And like, it wasn't creepy or anything like no. that. They were just like really nice, pleasant people. So that was cool. I yeah. felt welcome. Yeah, that was definitely a highlight of visiting Taipei. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the last point that we really liked about Taipei is that yes, it's a really big city, but it's spread out enough that it doesn't feel claustrophobic. Yeah, it doesn't feel yeah. as crowded as like a Hong Kong or a Seoul or mm -hmm. some of these other cities. So it has that, it just has, you just feel like you have a bit more open space. Yeah. And I love that. Personal space is nice. So now we're going to talk about things that we didn't necessarily like about Taipei. And honestly, we had to sit down and like kind of rack our brains because yeah. there weren't a whole lot of things that we disliked. No, it was a really fun trip overall. Yeah. Like we, we really love visiting. So the thing we'll start off with is weather. Uh, we were supposed to be visiting in what was considered the dry season, dry season. and we experienced a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. And even when it wasn't raining, it was really humid. So we kind of had to bring an umbrella everywhere. Mm -hmm. And there would be days where it'd be like rain and then a little pocket of sunshine and then a lot of rain again. And so like we had to be prepared for, for rain all the time. Yeah. And you may have seen some blue skies in the video. I think we had one day of blue skies and we were literally like, oh my gosh, it's a sunny day. We, we have, have to, to go, go now. Yeah, we were really and we were like <laughs> running around trying to film in good yeah. weather because honestly it was quite wet while we were there. So another thing that we kind of disliked about the city, and this is true of most city, big cities we visit, is around rush hour mm -hmm. in the metro it could get quite crowded. Um, yeah. But yeah, aside from that, man. No complaints. We had a really good time. 
So if you're thinking of visiting Taipei as well, we hope this video was kind of handy, kind of useful. If you have any other questions about the city, feel free to pop those in the comment section below and we'll try to answer those if we can. Yeah. If not, if you guys know the answer, feel free to, you know, chime in and help fellow travelers out. Yeah, please, please share your tips because uh, we've only been there, we were only there for a week, so uh, anyone who lives there would know a lot more than we do. Yeah. So yeah, signing off and uh, definitely recommend going to Taipei. Bye for now.